What's going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's tutorial we are going to be creating a sidebar, an animated responsive sidebar in under five minutes. So as you can see here we have these uh, little buttons, um, you've got the about, the portfolio and contact which have a little huffer state here and it is responsive as well. So as we shrink down you'll see different states so when we get to a smaller side the sidebar will shrink so you have more room for your content and if you get right down to a phone size you'll see the sidebar disappears and we get this little toggle. If we click it it has a little animation and this animates out by sliding out which is pretty cool. So guys if you're excited don't forget to leave a thumbs up and let's get on with the tutorial so the first thing we need to do is inside of your text editor, we need to create two new files. The first file is going to be uh, an index.html file. The second file is the main.css file. So you can see here we have index.html and main.css. Inside of the HTML file, we're gonna basically create the boilerplate here. So we'll just give this a name of responsive navbar. We then want to link our style sheets so all the styles we put are inside of our file. We then want to create a app wrapper, so just a diff with the class of app. We're then going to have this aside class, which is a sidebar semantic HTML tag uh, with the class of sidebar. We're then going to put a h3 tag in there called menu to add the little menu we saw in the demo. Then we're going to be adding in a navigation semantic HTML class with the class of menu. We're then going to add four or as many different menu items as you want. We're going to, oh, the first menu item is going to be our home, about, portfolio and contact. And as you can see, the first menu item is currently set to is active because this will be the current page you are on. So that's why we'll style this differently. Then we're going to be adding a main tag with the class of content. We're going to be using a H1 for our title, which says welcome human. And finally, we're going to be adding in a little bit of lorem ipsum, but this is just to show where your content will go. The main focus is on the aside tag here, which is going to show off our, off our sidebar here. So this is where all our sidebar content will go. So inside of our main.css, we are going to add some resets. So by targeting the root, we're going to add some margin, padding, box sizing and font families in there just to reset. We could also add a specific font family here. I'm going to add Fire Sands and there you go. That is now set. We're then going to turn our app wrapper into a flex. So the app wrapper we set up here is now a flex box with a min height of 100 VH so it stretches out the whole page. And there you go. This is what it currently looks like. It's a bit all broken so let's style it up some more. We're then going to be adding in this sidebar here with a flex of 110, which basically says stretch as big as you can stretch before hitting other content. We're going to set a max width of 300 pixels and add some padding and a background color. We're then going to style the H3, the little menu title on top, to look like this. So we're going to do the menu with some minus margin because we want to counteract the sidebar margin so we can actually have these touching the edge. We're then going to add in a sidebar menu menu item class uh, where we add in some pa more padding to bring it back out and some other little elements here like a transition for the animation when we hover over it. We're then going to add this um, menu item hover state and its active state to our class. This is what it currently looks like you can see here we've got this about portfolio and contact and now you can have road for it so our sidebar is looking pretty good we're going to finish off the desktop view by adding in some default styling for the actual content the h1 inside the content and the paragraph and as you can see we just added a flex to this to make it stretch the whole page and some padding we've added in a h1 styling and a paragraph tag so let's go have a look what that looks like so there you go, now you can see this is looking really good on desktop. This is the sidebar menu we wanted to create. So let's add in the responsive view for this. So as you can see, we've added in a max width media query where we set the max width to 1024, meaning anything above or below 1024 pixels will get this styling. So we've added in the sidebar with a max width of 200 instead of the ma max width of 300 we currently have set. So this makes it a little bit smaller on the bigger screen. So if we bring this out, you'll see at that point it grows and when we get a bit smaller, it shrinks down. So to add in the styling for the button, what we needed to do is add in this menu toggle just underneath our app so we have something we can actually click to open up the menu. 
So we've added in another media query where the max width is now 768 pixels, which is iPad size. So iPad and smaller will have the cut this styling here. So we'll get in a menu toggle, which we just added inside of here. And we're gonna give it the display of block. We then have the content, which is gonna be padding top of eight rem, which push it down so our menu button can sit at the top here. We're then setting our sidebar to be a fixed position. We're gonna stretch it out across the whole page and then we're gonna hide it off screen by minusing its uh, left position 300 pixels, which is this max width. So above the content and the paragraph tag and also the first media query, we're gonna add in the menu toggle styling here. So if we save, you can see we now have this ball that sits above here, but we also need a little hamburger to animate above it. So we're gonna get the hamburger container and we're gonna add in this class, which we set to relative and we do a bit of uh, calculating here, which you'll understand in a minute why we do the minus two pixels. Next up, we're going to basically set the spans, which is inside of here, and the before and after attribute. So we have three lines with this styling. So we're gonna set a position of block, position absolute, width, and here you can see height four pixels. Now, because we're setting it to four pixels, that's gonna offset our position by two pixels because it's saying this to the middle, but it's only saying it to the top, which then it will be down. And that's why we're minusing two pixels from our top position in the hamburger to be able to bring it to the center of the screen. Now you can only see one line here and that's because all the lines are st stacked on top of each other. So we need to manually separate before and after in two different tags. So as you can see here, I've added in two new uh, selectors here. The hamburger spam before, and we're gonna to set it to minus eight, so it sits above the button, and also the after, which sits below by adding a top to push it down. So you can see here, now it's looking pretty good, but when we click it, it does nothing. That's because we need to add in the animation and also the JavaScript. So for the um, animation, we're gonna use transforms and the top position here. So you can see here, menu.toggle.active, hamburger spans so we're going to select the span and we're going to rotate it by 45 degrees we're then going to get the menu toggle dot is active hamburger the before so the top one and we're going to set it to zero which is going to bring it to the center of the screen and we're going to set its rotation to zero degrees which is going to bring it back the opposite way because this is the parent this will rotate this now you're gonna see here, the menu toggle is active for after, we're gonna set top to zero and transform its rotate to 90 degrees to bring it um, as an X. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna now go back into the HTML. And at the bottom of the page, we're gonna add in this script tag. So you can see here, we now have a script. We're then gonna get reference to our menu toggle button, which is this here and also our sidebar here because we're going to want to be able to bring our sidebar out when it becomes active. We're then going to add in a menu toggle event listener of click. So when we click this button here, it's then going to call whatever we have inside this arrow function. And all we're going to do inside of this arrow function is toggle two classes on is active. And because in our CSS, we've added is active class with different states. So now if we come over to our button and we click it, you can see our home icon now comes out. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this type of video. If you're new around here, you won't notice anything different, but if you've already watched previous videos, you'll know this is a different type of video than I normally do. Normally I type out all the code uh, myself instead of just adding the code, type in the code and then cut it and then talk about it. Hopefully this explains enough, but also doesn't have any of the boring typing that can take a while and sometimes I make mistakes and you guys will make the same mistakes if you're coding along. So hopefully you're able to pause, write it out and continue on without having any troubles. Let me know in the comments if you do have any troubles and you prefer the old way of me writing code. If not, I hope you enjoy this new way. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you're new around here. Smash that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.